Hey, let me ask you a simple question. Of the four cases you see pictured here, in which of the four cases would the absolute pressure at position Y be the greatest? It turns out the absolute pressure in all four cases are equal. And that's because pressure only varies with depth. If the depth is the same in every case, then the pressure doesn't vary with the volume of the container or the shape of the container. Pressure doesn't vary with volume. Uh, pressure doesn't vary with shape. Pressure varies with depth. Let me ask a similar question. Let's say you're going to go for a swim and dive six feet deep underwater in case A, in a freshwater lake, in case B, in a swimming pool, or case C, in the ocean. Six feet in every case. In which case would you experience the greatest absolute pressure? Okay, so you caught me on a technicality. Case C would be the greatest pressure. I might have misspoken. Pressure varies with depth and density. If you swim the same depth in two different fluids, there'll be a greater pressure in the fluid with greater density. And seawater has a slightly greater density than fresh water. Um, density of fresh water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Now, for seawater, it depends, um, but on average, it's a pretty good approximation that seawater has a density of about 1,025 kilograms per cubic meter. So the equation for absolute pressure just says absolute pressure is the pressure you already experience due to the weight of the atmosphere plus the additional weight of the uh, fluid in which the object is submerged. So we say absolute pressure is atmospheric pressure plus the additional pressure that we call gauge pressure where gauge pressure depends on the density of the fluid, the depth at which the object is submerged in the fluid, and of course the strength of the gravitational field. Quick story, when I was a freshman in high school, I had the opportunity to get out of my PE class by signing up for a scuba class that was offered on campus. And so uh, I started my certification for scuba back when I was uh, 14 or 15 years old. And um, we practiced scuba diving in the deep end of the swimming pool. And then on the last day of the semester, I suppose it was, we went to the beach, and if you paid the money, you could complete your certification and become fully scuba certified. I was really just in it to get out of PE class, so I didn't pay the money and never became fully scuba certified, but I have breathed through a uh, the scuba apparatus. What is that? That's an acronym, right? Self-Contained Underwater Breathing Apparatus. Well, the nice thing about scuba diving compared to snorkeling is it allows you uh, the freedom to dive to great depths. You can still dive down deep when you snorkel dive, but you have to surface back up for, uh, for more air, of course, and you have to blow really hard and clear the water that gathered in your snorkel. So I've always wondered, why the heck don't they make snorkels that are really, really, really long so we can dive just as deep as we otherwise could with scuba and still be able to breathe. Well, pressure varies with depth. So if you dive too deep, this value of H creates an additional pressure that acts on your lungs. But if this snorkel goes to your mouth, then you've opened up your lungs to a pressure of one atmosphere on the interior, but on the exterior, 
there'd be a pressure much greater than that. And the diaphragm muscles that control the expansion of our lungs just aren't strong enough to deal with that additional pressure. In fact, the maximum depth that you can go underwater and still expect your um, diaphragm muscles to be strong enough to allow you to take a breath is somewhere between 16 to 20 inches. So there's a maximum functional length of a snorkel tube. All of this kind of reminds me of the classic demonstration where you take a glass, hold it upside down. You might have watched the video on this. I don't know if you can tell in this picture that this glass is full of water. And so if the card was placed on top of the glass before it was inverted, once it goes inverted, nothing spills out. That's because of the very top part of the glass. It was almost totally full when you put this card on. And if the water were to fall out, then this region here, uh, well, it certainly wouldn't be a bubble filled with air because the glass was totally full of water when you put the cardboard on. So for the water to fall out, this space up here would have to contain vacuum. And the pressure of a perfect vacuum is equal to zero. Notice, by the way, there's no such thing as negative pressure. Now there can be a negative change in pressure. If pressure drops, we can associate that with a negative value. But as far as absolute pressure is concerned, there's no such thing as negative pressure. The lowest pressure you can get is that of a perfect vacuum equal to zero. So if the top part of this glass full of water is at zero pascals because it's vacuum, and then the bottom is being pushed on by one atmosphere, or 1.01 .01 times 10 to the fifth pascals, then that difference in pressure between the top and the bottom is enough to account for the weight of the water. So this is really the principle behind which a barometer works. Now the question is, what's the tallest glass that you could ever expect to do this from? I know they make some really tall glassware for drinking specialty types of beer. I think a Pilsner beer is supposed to be uh, consumed out of a really tall glass. So could you fill up a Pilsner glass with beer? And then at your local pub, impress all the other patrons by putting it upside down and expecting none of it to spill out. Uh, yes, it would work. Okay, so try that next time you're out of the pub, eh? What's the upper limit? What's the tallest size glass I could expect to do this with? Well, the point at which the zero pressure associated with the vacuum and the atmosphere pushing down from the bottom, if that's no longer able to account for the weight mg of the fluid, then the trick doesn't work anymore. And as we found out earlier, when it comes to water, considering the equation that expresses how gauge pressure varies with depth, for every 10.3 meters which is approximately uh, 33 feet. For every 10.3 meters or 33 feet of water, that leads to an additional atmosphere of pressure. So that's the upper limit to the height of a column of water that can be inverted and not spill out. H maximum is about 10.3 meters. Well, that wouldn't make for a very practical barometer. Uh, we, don't, we couldn't fit a 10.3 meter tall column of uh, water uh, in a classroom to demonstrate pressure differences, but we can achieve that with a mercury barometer. So if we have an inverted tube that's filled with mercury whose density is much greater than water, then the same principle takes place. Now, I want to 
argue that when it comes to physics, nothing sucks. So some people would say, if you try to create, uh, this is a simplified model of the way in which a mercury barometer works. Essentially, you do this same sort of trick. You invert a column of fluid. So here, it's an inverted, well, it's kind of like a test tube shape, right? Only a really tall one more than 760 millimeters tall. If we want, we can call that 76 centimeters. So a little less than uh, a meter stick, right? About three-fourths of a meter stick. So if you have a, a column, a glass tube that's that tall, filled with mercury, and then you place the open end, instead of covering it with a piece of cardboard, you place the open end in a dish, then some of the mercury spills out into this dish. And as it spills out, if it was totally full before you inverted it, then this region doesn't contain air as it empties. It would have to contain vacuum. So the pressure here would equal zero. Some people want to argue that a vacuum sucks the mercury back up into itself. But I say nothing sucks in physics. The only way uh, something could suck is if there was such thing as negative pressure, but there's not. The lowest pressure we ever have is zero. So a good way to think of it is that the atmosphere is pushing the mercury back up to compete with the idea that gravity wants to pull down. Now, if gauge pressure is equal to density times gravitational field strength times height, Due to the large density of mercury, it turns out the height of a column of mercury that produces one extra atmosphere of gauge pressure is about 76 centimeters. So I could encourage you to um, Google, look up, ask Siri, what's the density of mercury? And you can verify that when you multiply the density of mercury times 9.8, times about 0 0.76 meters, that comes out to roughly 1.01 times 10 to the fifth pascals. Now what happens is, as weather conditions change, the um, air molecules can expand or contract with changing temperatures, and so the pressure, the weight of a column of air, remind you of this diagram, this is the upper limit of the atmosphere, and here you are standing at the surface of the earth, that atmospheric pressure that we've grown accustomed to has to do with the weight. Well, if that's a different temperature air and the air molecules are more expansive, then it weighs a little less. If it's colder air and the molecules are more condensed, then it weighs a little more. So the uh, differences in um, weather can produce subtle changes in the pressure. And in that case, if the atmospheric pressure isn't quite as great, then the mercury level will fall a little bit. And if the atmospheric pressure is a little greater, well, then you get the idea the mercury level rises a little bit. So we can measure the uh, atmospheric pressure just by seeing what level the mercury sits in our tube. Uh, they say that some people uh, can sense those differences in pressure in the little um, uh, gaps in their, in their joints, like in a knee joint. Um, I guess there's a small vacuum uh, bubble that exists in that synovial joint. And as the atmospheric pressure increases, um, as the barometer rises or falls, uh, people can feel that in their joints. I don't know. I haven't experienced that myself. But it seems like a, a reasonable possibility. So there we have it. That's the behavior of the uh, mercury barometer.